Here, we find ourselves at Sketchy U's annual acapella sing-off, where the ketones are battling it out against their arch-rivals, all the high notes. And while all that's unfolding, I'll be in the back row performing an operatic aria about the reactions of ketones and aldehydes. Oh, I'm just kidding, I can't sing. <laughs> I hope I had your word, though. To set the stage, let me introduce our real key players. This karaoke lover never misses an opportunity to steal the stage. His key-shaped pendant should help you remember ketones. In contrast, in the shadows, Talented but shy Al is hiding. He's a master of falsetto, which is why he's a member of all the high notes. He's here to represent aldehydes. Both ketones and aldehydes contain carbon-oxygen double bonds called carbonyls, kind of like this double-barreled microphone stand with an O-shaped microphone. Carbonyls are important because their carbons have large partial positive charges. That's shown by the cord and tape coming from the end opposite the O mic in the shape of a partial positive sign. That partial positive charge on a carbonyl carbon draws in nucleophiles. Just like this freshman new kid who can't seem to keep himself from moving in on the microphone. Ooh, yeah, that's, uh, that's embarrassing. But conveniently, this new kid's onstage fiasco looks a lot like what happens when a nucleophile attacks a carbonyl carbon. As the nucleophile bonds, two electrons from the carbon-oxygen double bond kick up onto oxygen. This means the carbonyl carbon will now have four single bonds, so it takes on a tetrahedral shape, like this sadly split microphone stand. 